unsolved. The John Benet Ramsey case, homicide investigation. This video begins with the facts and evidence of the case. Then it presents John and Patsy's account of what happened. And then Officer Rick French's account of what happened that morning. And then concludes with a little discussion about the suspects. At approximately 11.20, John Ramsey entered what was called the wine cellar and he found John Bonet's dead body lying on the floor and right behind him was Fleet White. And John picked up John Bonet's dead body and, and carried it upstairs to the living room floor and put her down. And then a blanket and a sweatshirt were tossed on the body. The pathologist determined that the cause of death was asphyxia by strangulation associated with cranial cerebral trauma. There was a red heart drawn on her left palm and there was trace DNA under her fingernails. There was trace DNA on the left and right sides of the exterior waistband of the Long Johns, and there was DNA of the same unknown male in a blood drop on her underwear. All sections of the vaginal mucosa contain vascular congestion, chronic inflammation. A small number of red blood cells were present on the eroded surface, as is foreign material. There were these two unidentified marks on her left upper to mid back. There was a white nylon cord embedded in her neck and attached to a broken paintbrush handle. The white nylon cord was tied to the handle in this manner shown here. The one broken piece with the brush attached was found in this paint tote in the basement just outside the wine cellar. After John Ramsey removed John Bonet's body from the wine cellar, this white blanket and the pink Barbie nightgown were left on the floor in the wine cellar. Nylon cord, similar to that around her neck, was used to tie her wrists. And here is a photograph of one of her wrists. John Ramsey stated that he removed a piece of duct tape from John Bonet's mouth. And here's a photo showing that piece of duct tape. Four red and black fibers were removed from the sticky side of the duct tape. And fibers were vacuumed up from around John Bonet's body and from the wine cellar. A shoe or boot print from the brand name High Tech was found on the cement floor in the wine cellar. A bowl of fresh pineapple was found on the breakfast dining room table with Patsy's fingerprints on the bowl. A glass with a tea bag inside of it with Burke's fingerprints was found next to the bowl of pineapple. The pathologist found fragments of pineapple in her digestive tract. A heavy maglite flashlight was found on the kitchen counter. Near the back 
glass door to the Ramsey's house, there was and might still be a window well with a grating above it that led down into the Ramsey's basement and people could move through that window well and into the basement because Detective Lou Smith went through there and John Ramsey stated that he went through there when he was locked out of the house during the summer. So I will finish this list of evidence and details with the most contested piece of evidence, this crime scene photo of the window, the scuff on the wall, and the suitcase under the window. The argument is over if somebody traveled through the window well that night because the evidence and details aren't clear. Was there a spider web connected to the grating in the window well? Would that prevent somebody from getting through without tearing the spider web away? Fragments of glass were or weren't found. There was at least one little square piece on top of the suitcase, but then everything is contaminated, even this photograph, because the suitcase was moved by Fleet White and the window was open for some reason when they took this photograph. Because last anyone knew, John Ramsey stated that he closed and latched that window. John and Patsy Ramsey stated that they left the White's Christmas dinner approximately at 9 p.m. that night. They stopped at two of their friends' houses on the way home and gave them Christmas gifts, and John Bonet had fallen asleep in the car. At approximately 10 p.m., John Ramsey carried John Bonet to bed, put her in bed. Patsy followed behind and removed her shoes and pants and put on the long johns. And John Bonet did not wake up. By approximately 10.30 p.m. that night, Patsy and John were in bed going to sleep and they did not get up in the middle of the night and they woke up around 5.30 a.m. the next morning. After Patsy went to her bathroom and did her hair and makeup, she went downstairs to the kitchen and she discovered the three-page ransom note on the bottom of the spiral staircase in the back of the house. Patsy read the beginning part of the ransom note to about where it says, We have your daughter in our possession. Then she ran up to John Bonet's bedroom and found her missing. Screamed for John. John came down. It was hectic. They don't remember what happened. And then she went downstairs and called the police. John Ramsey stated in his police interview that sometime that morning he went downstairs and noticed this window door was slightly opened and he pushed it closed and latched it and then returned upstairs. Sometime after 1 p.m., Detective Linda Art asked John Ramsey to look throughout the house from top to bottom and see if he saw anything amiss. John Ramsey, Fleet White, and John Fernie then roamed through the house looking. And that brings us back to where we started when John opened the basement wine cellar door and found John Bonet's dead body.
Officer Rick French's report states, John directed me through the house and pointed out a three-page handwritten note which was laid on the wooden floor just west of the kitchen area. Mrs. Ramsey told me that she had gone into John Bonet's room at about 5.45 to wake John Bonet in preparation for a short trip the family was to take that day. Patsy found John Bonet's room empty and then discovered the note as she walked down the stairs. She immediately called the police. There were no obvious signs of a forced entry or struggle. Mr. Ramsey told me that the house appeared to be locked up as it had been left. Mr. Ramsey said he read to both kids for a short time and then they were put in bed by 10.30. Mrs. Ramsey said that John Bonet had been dressed in, in white long underwear and a red turtleneck. How could anyone think that Patsy was not involved in the death of her daughter? Look at the ransom note. Look at the fibers on the inside sticky part of the duct tape. Look at how John Bonet's dead body was found in a white blanket with her pink Barbie nightgown. Look at the bowl of pineapple with Patsy's fingerprints on the bowl which proves that John Bonet was up and Patsy was lying. Look how the crime scene seems to have been staged. John Bonet's wrists being tied, the duct tape on her mouth, and the ransom note found conveniently on the bottom of the stairs that Patsy uses in the morning to go to the kitchen. And all the false statements that Patsy made to the police. How could you not accuse John Ramsey of the murder of his daughter? Look at the evidence of molestation, past molestation. Who could have done that? And how can an intruder have done that and then commit this murder? And it gives a motive for the murder that John Ramsey when he came home and after Patsy went to bed he molested her and something went wrong and he ended up killing her. The bowl of pineapple shows that John Bonet was up that Burke Ramsey probably was the one who got it out while John was up doing something else and you might say that Patsy knew what happened but not necessarily. The police were looking at her as a suspect, and it was four months later before they did their police interviews. And so Patsy might have lied to protect herself about John Bonet being asleep in the car. It was just a simple lie to protect herself from getting in trouble. Burke Ramsey. The bowl of pineapple and the glass on the table would suggest that he got this out on his own and the flashlight being on the kitchen counter that he might have got angry with John Bonet and struck her in the head because John Bonet seemed to get way more attention than Burke did and most of the other physical evidence and details would be his parents covering up for his action. Now, some suggest John Andrew Ramsey because the neighbor, Joe Barnhill, thought he saw John Andrew outside their house, but the police investigation found that he was in the Atlanta area on Christmas night. He used an ATM he went to the movies, and he slept at his mom's house. Now, how could you not believe that an intruder killed John Bonet by the vicious way that she was murdered, strangled, 
and her skull fractured by the trace DNA on the exterior waistband of her long johns that matched the unknown male DNA in the blood drop on her underwear. And then the possible stun gun marks and the high-tech boot print left in the wine cellar. So take Glenn Meyer, for example. He was living next door. He was the basement tenant of Joe Barnhill, who wants the Ramsey's dog. So he probably would have been aware that the Ramsey's were leaving early in the morning. And his handwriting was tested several times compared to the ransom note. Look at Mervyn Pugh, the husband of the Ramsey's housekeeper. They had money troubles. He had been in their house when the Ramsey's were away during Thanksgiving. And he had minor issues with the law in his past. And then there's the crazy and unusual McReynolds family with Bill McReynolds playing Santa and taking such a major interest in John Bonet. Look at the bottom left corner of this photograph of Bill and Janet. Isn't that a picture of John Bonet? And then look at Jesse McReynolds. He's the only one that I know of that I've come across that actually went to prison for kidnapping. He served in jail, I believe 14 years for several crimes and he had multiple issues. And so as intruder theories go, he's definitely a suspect in my mind. Well, this ends this episode of Unsolved and looking at the evidence it all doesn't coincide with each other. It's like they're contradictory. You have John Bonet's dead body wrapped lovingly in a white blanket with her pink Barbie nightgown, but then you have trace DNA from some unknown male possible intruder on the long johns and in the drop of blood on her underwear. Then you have the chronic inflammation that suggests past molestation. And then you have the bowl of pineapple that suggests the Ramseys were lying about John Bonet being in bed asleep when she must have been awake and ate some pineapple. And then you have the whole issue with the window and John Ramsey leading everybody to believe that the window, the basement window, had some play, some part in this tragedy.